All right. We are back here on this show. The NFL draft is in two days. And we got a couple topics here gearing up for the big day. And the first topic that we are going to talk about right now is the Jets. And the question we have is what the Zach Wilson trade means for the Jets and the Broncos draft moves coming up. And Zay, the mic is yours to kick us off first. Uh, I think what the Zach Wilson trade meant for the Jets is they are able to acquire a six-round pick. Um, acquiring that six-round pick um, allows them to move up in a draft in some capacity. Where? I don't know. But they have another six-round pick they could pair up with it, and they could get a trade value of an earlier pick. Um, what it could be, I, like I said, I'm not sure, but I know there would be some teams that would probably would acquire two six-round picks for a pick if they don't see anybody that they like in that, in that particular round. Um, for the Broncos, it eliminates the uh, – the what's the word I'm looking for? It eliminates the necessity, I guess, um, to draft a quarterback in, in that in that in their uh, first round. Also, trade up to draft a quarterback. Um, Zach Wilson will be, I guess, uh, battling out with whatever quarterback they have on on, on their depth chart. I think Stidham, I, I, I forgot his name, and they'll they'll battle it out for that number one that QB one spot. Um, it also, it, it alleviates the pressure to have to draft a QB one in this particular draft that they don't see anybody they like. Um, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of rumors about Penix possibly going to Denver, uh, Bo Nix. Um, you know, they think about maybe trading, going drafting Spencer Rattler or Jordan Travis later in the draft. There's a lot of, you know, speculation, but it re- removes that pressure to be like, ah, oh, we have to get somebody in the first round. Now they can focus on linemen. They can focus on defense. They can focus on receiver, whatever, wherever else they want to go. But now it, it there's no longer we need a top three, top four quarterback in this draft, and we will trade our assets for him. You get Zach Wilson, you could battle it out with whoever. You could draft a quarterback later on, and then y'all can name y'all QB1 whenever. Because after Caleb Williams, everyone else has been reported a very suspect. So we'll see what the Broncos decide to do. But adding Zach Wilson gives him a QB battle uh, for QB1 uh, in this cu- upcoming training camp. Yeah, Zach, I'll just um, chip in here, and then I'll let you go. Um, I think for me, I want to start off with this. I want to look at the Broncos post Peyton Manning real quickly here, right? Because you got Brock Osweiler, Trevor Simeon, Paxton Lynch, Casey Keenum, Joe Flacco, Drew Locke, Brandon Allen, Jeff Driscoll, Brett Weepin, Teddy Bridgewater, Russell Wilson, and Jared Stidham, right? Obviously, quarterback stability, we all know, is very important. And the Broncos have not had quarterback stability since Peyton Manning retired. And my worry is that the Jets, in some ways, could be the next Denver Broncos post Aaron Rodgers. Because a lot of people, and I understand we, yes, there's a way that we should live in the now, right? Obviously, we can't overlook things, right? And I get it. We have a now. And I think the Jets have done a very good job of adding talent to their roster during free agency. You know, obviously, they had no talent outside of Garrett Wilson. They um, went after Mike Williams, a deep threat to pair alongside Garrett. You know, Wilson, I understand the injury history there. But that's a good pickup. Time on Smith, on the line. Obviously, you need to protect Aaron Rodgers, right? So they've done a very good job. They had a solid offseason thus far. And the draft, obviously, is coming up. We'll see what moves they make during the draft. But my worry, and excuse me for looking ahead, because that's what I do. They call me Lil Shadamas. Lil Shadamas predicts the future. Okay, no shit. Downs predicted the future. So that's what I do. And I'm worried that the Jets will end up like the Denver Broncos post Aaron Rodgers because you don't have a backup quarterback right now other than Ty Ward Taylor, who's clearly not a long term guy. He's just a stopping gap, you know, um, bridge, not even bridge, but a stopping gap substitute quarterback in case Aaron Rodgers goes down. Right. What's your plan as a Jets organization for long term? When I see this move being made, from the Denver Broncos perspective and the Jets perspective, why not make a move for Justin Fields? I mean, you literally gave up a six pick, a six round pick for Zach Wilson. When you're the Broncos, you could have literally got Justin Fields for a six round pick. Is it that that's how the league view Justin Fields in the same criteria and bracket as Zach Wilson? Maybe that's a clear answer. Maybe because they went for the same, right? But the Jets as well. Why didn't you make a move for Justin Fields to have a long-term plan behind Aaron Rodgers? So when you look at this question, this question takes me on a trip to the future 
in many ways. But when you want to bring it back to the present, I think for me, if they can find a quarterback late in the draft who they want to groom, uh, then maybe they get that guy, but they probably going to need another one because that guy may be a low pick for a reason. He may not be that dude, right? We don't know who that guy's going to be. But I think for me, when you look at the Jets draft, and I'm closing here with my first lap, is when you start out with the number 10 pick, and obviously y'all guys, if y'all want to go deeper than that, I'm just going to stay with the 10 pick for now. Um, it's going to be impossible to fumble that pick. There's so much talent offensively in this draft and credit to the Jets. They only got to focus on that side of the ball because a defense is one of the best defensive units in the league. Then they can focus on offense. There's no way they can fumble the number 10 pick, whether they go with that tight end dude, Brock, you know, Brock from um, Georgia, whether they go or Brock Bowers, that's his name, whether they go with um, Rome or they go with Malik neighbors or one of those guys, it's going to be hard and impossible to fumble that 10 pick. So I think right now the Jets are in a good spot. But it's hard for me to overlook the future. I mean, Will, to your point, man, like, haven't the Jets kind of been the Denver Broncos and that's why they got Aaron Rodgers? Like, they drafted Mark Sanchez, Sam Darnold, and Zach Wilson all in the top five. And, like, all all three of those guys turned out to be busts, you know? Like, that's kind of why they got Aaron Rodgers in the first place. So, I think... Same thing with Peyton. I, who was the quarterback before Peyton Manning on Denver? It's not um Jay Cutler? Was it Jay Cutler before Peyton Manning? Yeah, I believe so. He was a veteran quarterback. Oh, no, Tim Tebow, bro. Tim Tebow, yeah, it was Tim crazy. Tebow, and then that was y'all Zach Wilson. So y'all Zach Wilson was Tim Tebow. Then you know Peyton came, and then Aaron Rodgers came. So Aaron Rodgers is your Peyton. Can he lead you to a Super Bowl though? And what's going to happen after that? Yeah, and I mean the Jets right now are they're just a win now team. Like the window with the forty one year old Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, it's tightening, and and this year and next year are going to be super important. But I'm pretty fascinated with what they do with this number 10 pick personally i would draft an offensive lineman you know i really like the uh signing of tyron smith but he's an older guy he hasn't played a full season in a really long time and i think it's a pretty good bet that he's gonna miss at least three four games you're really gonna have to solidify that depth i'd be looking at uh fuaga from uh washington uh or uh the kid from oregon state uh too any of those guys uh Olu fashanu from penn state I i'd be looking at uh this is a really good tackle draft so those were the guys i'd be looking at brock bowers would be interesting because even though he's a tight end he he's really just a slot receiver like that would just be his name and his position so uh I wouldn't personally love the Bowers pick. I still think if Aaron Rodgers is still that dude, like the Jets are banking on him to be, he's still one of those quarterbacks that can make other guys around him better. And I do think having a nucleus of Garrett Wilson, uh, Mike Williams, and Brees Hall, along with uh, some of the other guys that hopefully Rodgers could contribute and make uh, better, that would be a good start. But also with the Bowers pick too, like that would put a lot on Nathaniel Hackett to get him open and get him uh, in a good position to succeed in the game plan. And it's... <laughs> obviously hard to feel confident about that. But um, I just got to say, guys, like I think Zach Wilson, he's an all time bust. And I think we're going to look back at him as one of the worst quarterbacks to get uh, consistent playing time in that we've seen in the NFL in recent memory. I mean, taking this guy with the number two pick could be a decision that really sets this Jets franchise back for a really long time. And from Denver's perspective, I am wondering, was this a move that Sean Payton made for a few reasons like did he does he think he could turn Zach Wilson around we know the arm strength is there we know he has some raw talent does Sean Payton the same guy that thought at one point in New Orleans that Taysom Hill could be Drew Brees's replacement and gave him big money does he think that Zach Wilson could be a guy in Denver that he turns around or does he just not love any of the quarterbacks in this draft and he's decided uh deciding to go elsewhere because if the Denver Broncos do enter this season with Jared Stidham and Zach Wilson as their one, two uh, quarterbacks on the depth chart, then this is going to be the worst team in the NFL. I don't care how good of a coach Sean Payton is. So I'm very curious to see, is there actually a chance that Denver doesn't take a quarterback in this first round because Sean Payton just doesn't really feel that sold on a guy. That's a question I'm wondering about. And Denver for me is going to be uh, one of the major teams to watch uh, going into this draft. You know, um, it's interesting because I, I I disagree with the notion that um the Jets don't need to go with a, a playmaker on offense. Um, they have no guys that create separation outside of Garrett Wilson. Um, uh, Mike Wilson, Mike Williams, is another guy. He doesn't create separation. He just makes tough catches. Um, and that's gonna be interesting. We have to bring in more playmakers on his offense. I think that needs to be addressed. It doesn't have to be addressed first round because it's a deep receiver class, but it needs to be addressed at some point in this draft. They need to bring in talent. Um, Aaron, Alan Lazard is not it. 
Xavier Gibson is uh, and just, if he makes a crazy jump, um, he's just a ca- a kick returner, and he's he's not a guy who's going to be uh, heavily utilized on the offense or a guy who created separation last year on the offense. And then Jason Brown Lee liked them, but he, he doesn't touch the field at all. And he, he's essentially another Alan Lazard. So it's like we need to bring some sort of talent, some capacity at top 10. If, if Bowers is this guy that everyone is talking about, this generational tight end that could go and be a receiver, that could that could block extremely well and do all this other stuff, then then put make that pick, right? Fine. Because it, it, no matter what they do between tight end, receiver, it's going to be – uh, a plus because what I saw last year was completely horrendous. Not say the tight end position was part of it, but that entire offense needs to be replaced just off of what we did last year. It was disgusting. Um, on a Zach Wilson point, Sean Payne's like, This is a, a kid on a rookie deal. Um, well, the Denver Broncos is like, This is a kid on a rookie deal. He flashed a lot of potential, and maybe it, it is just the Jets coaching staff. Maybe our coaching staff could be better and well equipped to bring something out of him, could be, to make the game easier, slow it down, whatever it is. They made that that trade. They didn't give away too much, and then they're on. They're off the hook the next season, and they could still draft the QB this year or next year, depending on what it is. If they don't see what they like, so I think it's like, yeah, like they maybe see something in them, but they want to see if it could probably turn into what Baker Mayfield turned into when people called him a bust, and hopefully they see something down the line. And also, let's not forget. Sean Payne was the one who coached Drew Brees when his stats and his numbers looked very identical to Zach Wilson to what they are now. And then we saw what happened with the Sean Payne Drew Brees connection. So it's not, I'm, I'm not saying that's the same player. Bro, like we're but, really going to compare Zach Wilson that, to Drew Brees. So. That's what I was saying. I'm like, I ain't know Drew Brees I mean, was never that bad before. Yeah, they, they have this. I, I that's new to my the ears. Stats, the, the early career stats is very similar. So it's like, you look at it. I think Jay Drew Brees actually had 30 interceptions yeah. the same amount of games. So it's like, it's, they're very similar stat lines. But Again, that's something you know. Sean Payne likes taking on projects, so maybe this is a project he's trying to take on. And you know, I, I'll say this right in regards to Brock Bowers, and you know, I'm hearing a lot of chit chatter about him going in the top ten. I I just won't do that if I'm any team, even the Bears. I I just don't. I wouldn't go there because number one, if you're the Jets, you're in a win now situation, right? And I think Rogers being there boxes you in to making win now moves. But when you look at the tight end position, it normally takes multiple years for a tight end to really cement himself in the lineup as a, a, a primary option. Like even Dalton Kincaid, who last year, everybody was saying, oh, he's a next generational Gronk, right? Yes, he did some good things last year, but it's not like he was on the field a lot in the beginning. It's not like he made like his stats, you know, jump out off the page. He could barely block. It takes time. So if you're in a win now move, does you know drafting a tight end that high make sense for right now? No, it doesn't to me. I think if you're the Jets, I like Zach, you know, take of going with a lineman. I think you can't go wrong then. I don't think you could go wrong with a wide receiver as well. I just think, you know, we know that Aaron Rodgers is a de facto GM and he's gonna have a lot of intel on what they do. I just think the Jets need to kind of like distance themselves. From his intel, I understand. Look, Rogers is probably going to be a happy camper because if they do take an offensive player, that would be the first time that has ever happened to him in his career. He was on the package for 18 years. They ain't draft a weapon in the first round, a wide receiver, nothing like that ever. And I think he's going to have that happen this time around. However, they need to know the guy that they want to draft for Rogers, whether it's a wide receiver or whether it's a lineman, because at the end of the day, Rogers is a placeholder. Yeah, I used his intel before to get Nathaniel Hackett over there. This guy's the worst play call in the league. Y'all use his intel already to pay and steal money. Alan Lazard and um Randall Cobb, who's literally more washed up than corn on a cob. Like, it's really that bad. Like, he messed y'all roster up. And um I think in the now, y'all have to do his best for the time period which y'all are, which y'all are in, which is when now, Super Bowl or bust. And so far, y'all laid the foundation in the free agent market, and I think y'all have to hit the draft as well to literally take advantage of Buffalo's demise in the AFC East, to take advantage of what could be, okay, we the league, and we adjusted to the Dolphin speed that's been killing us for two years, right, to take advantage of those opportunities. The Patriots are trash, especially talented-wise. Y'all need to hit the home run in the draft, and I think it starts by drafting the best player 
um, that y'all can for your team, whether it be a lineman or a wide receiver and positional value at that. And I think if they do that, then the Jets should be in the thick of things in the East. No, and well, to that point, it's I think it's important to remember, too, like this is a rare situation where the whole organization knows if the Jets don't make the playoffs this year, Joe Douglas and Robert Sala are both fired. So they don't care about next year's first round pick. I like the idea of taking a receiver, but I think there's a good chance that the big three of Harrison Jr., Neighbors, and Adunze are all gone by pick 10. So I could even see a scenario where Joe Douglas says, hey, if we if this doesn't work out this year, I'm not going to be uh, here next year anyway. I'll trade next year's first round pick and try to move up and really making and prioritizing those win now moves with an older quarterback in such a, a small window to win. I got one point on the Denver Broncos while I'm finishing up my last sentence on the Jets, right? I think for me, the goal for the Jets should be to not pick this high again. I think um, in, since 2015, they picked in the top 10 eight times, okay? Like, y'all got to make it a certified effort that this is going to be the last time we are drafting this high for the foreseeable future. And I think for me, when you talk about Denver and how this Zach Wilson trade makes sense for Denver, it gives them an opportunity to try to revitalize Zach Wilson's career, barring that he's going to be the starter, which we don't know if he is yet. Now, I do think in their position, they may feel that either A, there's a quarterback in this draft that is realistic for them to get that they don't like and they're not sold on, or B, the guy that they are sold on that will four pass a three may not land to them. So I do think, you know, having this trade is insurance that if they don't get that guy in the draft, or maybe it is, okay, maybe next year's draft, and we'll rock out with, you know, Zach Wilson, I still like the value that they got. They played horrible. But at the end of the day, I thought Baker Mayfield was horrible. I want to ask y'all too real quick, Zach. Actually, I, want to, I have a question for both of y'all. Like, if like, let's say they do draft a quarterback, right? And there's really, there's really no young quarterbacks. There's nobody, I think, after the top five. is like every every quarterback is like 24, 25, 26. So even if the Denver Broncos decide to draft a quarterback, which quarterback do you believe fits the mold that Denver's looking for, like a Michael Penix or more closer to Bo Nix? I think either one would have been good for Denver. But at the end of the day, they got to be sold. I'm not sure how far. That's the thing about it. And I still got a lot of questions that I don't really even have the answers for. I'm not sure how many quarterbacks are going to fall that low and potentially out of the first round, you know, because the Michael Penix situation is a little bit unique in the sense that some people view him as the second best quarterback in this draft. But you got certain mock drafts thinking he may fall out of the first round, maybe a team like the Raiders straight up to get him. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors in regards to that. We still got to know what Drake May and Jalen Daniels, we're going to talk about that next, you know, how that's going to pan out. So um, I think to not box yourself in a situation where you get nothing, take the fly on Zach Wilson. And if you can, if Michael Penny Jr. fall to you, I don't think there's anything wrong with drafting him, no. Like, you draft him as well. And Zach Wilson could make a living being a backup, which for all intents and purposes, maybe he should be a backup quarterback on somebody's roster, not a starter. Or third string. Or third string, maybe Stidham beats him out for the second job, you know? I just wanted to say, like, I have a problem with the Baker Mayfield comparison because Baker Mayfield, his rookie year, broke the rookie passing touchdown record. Baker Mayfield beat the Steelers in a playoff game before the Browns decided to move on from him. The, Zach Wilson, the Jets said after two years, the Jets said enough is enough. We're we're, more, we're mortgaging our whole future of uh, and putting it into the hands of Aaron Rodgers. But, but to be fair, the Browns situation and the Jets situation – is totally different. I understand the result was different comparing Baker Mayfield's first year to Zach Wilson, but the situation, the structure was different. The Jets have always fumbled quarterbacks. Geno Smith leaves the Jets career year. You know, um, Sam Donald, bust. You know, all those other guys, bust. Like, the Jets are known for not developing quarterbacks, which is why they went after Aaron Rodgers to begin with. And once again, my worry in the future is that post Aaron Rodgers, Okay, y'all got to figure that out, out again. And y'all might be in quarterback purgatory again. So my only my only point about the Baker Mayfield wasn't because of career status. It's mainly because Baker Mayfield was being written off and he got another opportunity and made that opportunity what that contract was now. I'm saying that maybe Sean Payne saw young quarterback, a rookie deal, 
if he works out, it works out for the Broncos because now we don't have to go looking for quarterbacks for the future. But if it doesn't work out, whatever, we'll start over from the beginning because they're already looking for a quarterback as is. So if they get the worst record, like you said, they'll probably end up with Shador Sanders next year in, in the draft. So, like, it's like, yeah, if, if it works out, fine. If it doesn't work out, we'll go get another quarterback. I mean, you can't even bank on that because his dad is saying that, oh, I want my son to play for the Cowboys. I want my son to play for the team. <laughs> like, you know, that Hollywood garbage. Ain't nobody dealing with that. So that's not even a guarantee. I think for me, you know, um, the point that I'm trying to make that just um, leaving my mind is that um, Sean Payton, I mean, look at his track record. He had a fascination with Taysom Hill. And Taysom Hill was nothing more than a gadget guy. Maybe he believes and has another fascination with Zach Wilson, or maybe he just wants to take a flyer. Yeah, all I'm saying is even with as good of a coach as Sean Payton is, like there's no chance Zach Wilson is turning his career around in Denver like Baker Mayfield did. I think I mean Russell Denver- Wilson did. And I understand I, I get it. Pre-Denver, Russell Wilson won a Super Bowl, but my God, two years ago, that was one of the worst quarterback seasons ever. And well, what are we doing? Why are we comparing Zach Wilson to these guys? Like Zach Wilson is I mean, one of the look, worst Russell quarterbacks Wilson I've ever seen. <laughs> Russell the, Wilson played Russell like Wilson, that. Bro. Even who had a worse? Right, let me ask you this question, Zach, and, and feel free to answer. Zay, who had a worse a year two years ago? Zach Wilson or Russell Wilson? I mean, Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson got benched for Chris Trevler on Thursday Night Football against the Jaguars. And guess what? They couldn't bench Russell Wilson because they paid him all that money. But why are we so <laughs> like? Why are we just like grabbing comps out of? thin air to defend Zach Wilson. Like, okay, fine. Saying, no, yeah, it's, not, it's not defending. And Zach, like you said, he's he's been one of the worst quarterbacks. It's because it's not defending. It's just saying that's what the Broncos mindset is. We're gonna trade for a quarterback who's been in who's been in NFL games and if he doesn't work out, all right, we didn't give up much and we're only paying half his salary. Like the Vikings traded that. for Sam Donald. Sam Donald's career, you know, has been over, you would think, right? After the Panthers stint you know, he goes and he's a backup in San Fran and then they take a fly on him. We've seen that a lot. You know, guys are taking flyers on previous guys in the draft that were quote unquote bus. Well, we said that's that about Gino too. Remember, we said Gino was one of the worst quarterbacks. Exactly. Ever seen. They and took then, a fly on Gino. Seattle, and what happened? He eventually became the starter. First of all, I don't think you could get worse than what Geno Smith was when he first came into the league. <laughs> and then he came in and he got his team to the playoffs. So what I'm saying is, yes, we know Zach Wilson has been trash since he's entered the league, but I'm not in the business of writing the obituary when I see around the league that there's certain guys that are reviving their careers based on schematic changes and structural changes. You know? Sure, go I wouldn't the ring. We said Jared, Jared Goff got dumped. Exactly. Jared Goff got dumped. Yes, he made the Super Bowl and all that. But clearly, Sean McVay thought that he wasn't the biggest part of that reason why they made the Super Bowl. He dumped him. And guess what? Career without a loss in Detroit. So um, Sean My Payton is still with one of the- all these comparisons, though, are like all these guys that at least gave you a flash. Like Geno Smith, his rookie but year. But they were on good teams. Games. <laughs> they were on good teams. You know, the no, Rams but Geno was- Smith. Geno Smith had flashes his rookie year. Like he, he had some good moments, you know, same with Sam Darnold. He's had some good moments. Zach Wilson has not like the jets. literally. Had a, yeah, the Chiefs for- game was a good moment on Monday, Monday night football game. in which they got robbed. They would have beat the chiefs, bro. The team that won the super bowl, they almost beat them. You know, there was a flash or two, but not enough consistency. Yeah. And- what I'm saying is, is like, they, that's why the Broncos took the chance because like, all right, we'll get, we'll try. Like, it, that's all it is. We'll try. Because at, at that point, you'll be drafting a quarterback, like I said, that you think might not even might not even be an NFL's caliber quarterback out of college. At least Zach Wilson has been in the league. Even though he's been bad, he's been in the league. He knows the, the day-to-day what it takes to be a quarterback. You bring in a college kid, you have to kind of take him through the steps. Crawl before you walk and do all this other stuff, which they're going to have to do anyway. So why not do it if they get an earlier pick in the first round next year? All right. I'm pretty much done on my end. Um, Zach, any last words or are we moving on? I think we're good. Last point, right. last point. The biggest buzz in Jets history was on Ver- Vernon Golston. <laughs> he hasn't had a sack. He didn't get a sack anytime on the end of Jets time. But anyway. Please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right. Slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a question. Something you may want to answer. Something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question.